Kingdom of Sweden. Government. Parliamentary Constitutional Monarchy. Ruler. Gustav V. Area. 175,000 square miles. Population. 3.2 million. Military. 55,000 men. 6 battleships. 2 cruisers. 24 torpedo boats. 3 submarines. And a dozen smaller craft. By the time of the Napoleonic Wars, Sweden had been in relative decline for nearly a century. The Swedes had enjoyed a quick rise in prosperity and power ever since their independence from the Kalmar Union in 1521. By the mid-17th century, the empire encompassed large sections of Danish, Russian, and Baltic land, and included cities in northern Germany as well as a small colonial empire. However, the economy ran primarily on loot from pillaged lands as well as tariffs from Baltic Sea trade. The Great Northern War, stretching two decades of the 18th century, really hampered Swedish military and economic power. By the time of the Napoleonic War, they were little more than a second-rate regional power, and in the 1808 Finnish War against Russia, saw their land in Finland gone, and a crushing defeat against a longtime rival. When the War of the Sixth Coalition came, the Swedes joined and went to war against the Danes, who had kept their support from Napoleon until they were forced to come to peace terms in early 1814. In the Treaty of Kiel, the Danish province of Norway was ceded to Sweden, and Sweden enjoyed a hundred years of peace, something rare for the time. In 1905, Norway peacefully gained their independence. When World War I was declared, many viewed that Swedish sympathies laid with Germany. There was a general animosity between the Swedes and Russians stretching back decades. The Swedish marshal was very pro-German, and King Gustav was married to King Wilhelm's granddaughter, Victoria of Bavaria. The population as a whole favored for neutrality, a policy that Sweden had claimed for a hundred years. There was a large amount of sympathy and identity with Germany due to its cultural and social democracy within the upper and middle class, as well as within the military. However, there was a difference between admiring Germany, or identifying with the culture, and being prepared to side with them in a war. Only a small group went that far, although they were very powerful people. In fact, in 1910, German and Swedish army staffs had talks regarding a possible campaign against Russia, but it never came to much. What did come of it was guarantees that Sweden would never join a war on the side of Russia. Even so, the Swedish government declared the neutrality on August the 4th of 1914. Four days later, Norway and Sweden issued a declaration that guaranteed each other's neutrality, and this provision was further extended to Denmark in December. Even though the nation was neutral, the foreign policy was very pro-German, and large sections of the government had pro-German sympathies. Many wanted to intervene on their behalf, and some alliance talks had been conducted, which would include offering Sweden, Finland, and the Baltic nations for joining. Even though these came to nothing, there was, there was one big thing that they did, they allowed Germany to use Swedish telegraph wires for overseas embassies. While these telegraph lines couldn't be as easily intercepted by the British, the Swedes had said that they had stopped allowing this in 1915. There were also instances like having their lighthouses blacked out, ban of military transit, and the mining of the sound and the Swedish indifference or outright support of German actions that didn't go unnoticed. Sweden was and had been a very trade-oriented nation, with exports, with exports being the main driver of its economy. Both Britain and Germany were vital players in this trade, as Germany was her primary importer and Britain her primary exporter. Sweden was not self-sufficient and imported one-third of its grain from Germany, as well as colonial products such as tea, coffee, and spices. However, the crisis did not arrive until the third year of the war. In the beginning, everybody thought that the war was going to be over soon, and as such, no government action was taken. But when the harvest of 1916 failed, and Germany declared unrestricted submarine warfare, food shortages became very noticeable. In an attempt to help with the food shortage, sugar and bread were rationed, followed by meat, egg, and other animal products. But the real problem was that there was simply not enough food to buy. People had to change their diet, and an animal-based diet was replaced by a non-fat, protein-rich diet, based on potato flakes, mushrooms, carrots, and things of that nature. Prices rose up 250% or more on certain items, which, in combination with the shortage of consumer goods, fueled a black market. The government's regulations and monetary policy made things even worse. Official maximum prices were constantly set too low, and instead of selling their meat on the open market, farmers withheld their goods or attempted to sell them illegally for a greater profit. When the U.S. entered the war in the spring of 1917, the trade with neutral nations had changed. Policy that had favored neutral commerce 
was heavily de discredited, and the Entente could view Sweden as an enemy for supplying the Germans. This led to an increase and tightening of the British blockade, which heavily hampered the Swedish economy and caused even more public unrest. Food rights became common, and people gathered all over the country in protest meetings. These hunger marches lasted for two months, and rumors of revolution circulated, inspired by the recent Russian Revolution. This social pressure, as well as scandals in the right-wing government, meant that there was a resounding liberal victory in the new Swedish election. This new government was able to reach an agreement with the Entente in May of 1918 to allow Swedish food imports once again from the West, preventing starvation on a large scale. I hope you like this brief look into Sweden during the First World War. If you'd like to learn about the other Scandinavian countries, click here for the episode about Denmark and click here for the episode about Norway. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.